Okay, well, some progress. I have it all wired up, like I said, the uh, filter is still not working right, so sometimes fat fingers help. So if you have a problem with an analog circuit, sometimes just poking your finger around on it can help um, to see if you're getting feedback or anything, so. There we go. Do you see, hear that? So if I hold my fingers right there, I can get the filter to work. Yeah. I don't know about the resonance yet. The resonance doesn't seem to work, but the but the filter is working. Look at that. Put my finger on top of the if I do it from this side? Nope. I have to have my finger underneath. I'm touching all 14 of the leads there, and then I put my finger on top. So, what am I doing? <laughs> what, what is that I'm missing here? There must be some... Something is missing, or some biasing that's required, or some capacitor that's required. I don't know. But yeah, it works great like that. So <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Ah, what's that? <laughs> I have to isolate where where touching is the best and. Try to figure out why. Component value or a little bit of feedback somewhere. I I don't know yet. All right, I found it. Found the pin, I mean. So if I touch pin, let's see here. Interesting. This should be the same. There we go, perfect, huh? All right. That is the biasing of the first differential pair. And I remember my last filter was a bit susceptible to what values you put. There's a pull-up. Yeah, so I need to take a look at those. I'll remove those values and we can play with them. All right, I'm done with this project. It's a little bit half-baked. Um, the filter, the filter is a ladder, right? Um, it's, it, it's a ladder and my signal seems to go up the ladder then die. So what I did was I kind of bypassed a couple orders of the filter. So that's what this jumper does here. It bypasses a couple orders. So now you can hear the envelope generator and it can make weird sounds. So I'm modulating the I'm modulating the filter with one of the oscillators and I'm putting in three notes and anyway, it's kind of space and spacey sounds. Anyway, it's done. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I tried to make it more about the circuits and less about the synthesizer, but I know that I got a whole bunch of viewers who are really, really into synthesizers and there's a whole community in there. So anyway, I hope I kind of helped those guys out with some content that they enjoyed. I, I hope that I got some people maybe, oh, hey, this is something maybe I'm interested in. Maybe I want to do analog synthesizers. I hope uh, some people just enjoyed maybe the theory of the, uh, of the circuits and things like that. And my main goal was to show you some options amp circuits that actually do things that you it's it's always nice to um like i liked optics because i would build things that i could see and here you're building electronics that you can hear um and uh so anyway 
Um, I'm going to make this available on PCB Way so you can order the boards. Um, I'm going to have everything on there. I'm going to have the, the KiCad schematic and, and PC board layout. So if you want to get this and modify it, you're, 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 you're good to go. Uh, it'll, there'll be Gerbers there. You can order the boards there. You can do anything you want with it. Um, I'm hoping that uh, some people will enjoy it. And so it's all, all up for grabs. And uh, it has been a lengthy, <laughs> lengthy series. I know a lot of people are screaming, get back to RF, do some more RF, do some more vintage computing, uh, do, some, <laughs> do some other things. Uh, so anyway, uh, done with this pro project. And uh, it, like I said, um, I, think, I think it's got a lot of really good building blocks to, to teach and a lot of uh, fun and maybe get you launched into the, the, the great world of, uh, of uh, analog synthesizers. Boy, you can drop a ton of money there. <laughs> All right, this is an update video. I shoot these videos ahead of time, and so a lot of times I'll get viewer comments and they won't make it into the next videos. Um, I had a viewer comment that saved my life. So um, he pointed out a problem with my filter and uh, it now all works. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, these um, transistors in a package, the CA3046, it's a... Uh, a bunch of individual transistors in, in one piece of silicon. And you figure you just use them as transistors. But there's a catch. <laughs> there's a catch. Pin 13, which happens to be an emitter on one of the transistors, is tied to the substrate, which means it's tied to all of the other um, transistors as well through a diode. Um, so it's Im you, if you're going to use one of these chips, pin 13 has to be the very, very lowest voltage, or it has to be floating. Otherwise, the circuit's not going to work, and it doesn't. <laughs> so um, what I've done is I've, I had one package left over, I, one transistor left over, right? It's, a, it's, it's, it's one, two, three, four, five, I think it's six transistors in one package. Um, one, two, three, five, five, I think five in one package. And I was only using four of them, so there's one left over. Um, you can see it in the uh, in the schematic here. There's one transistor that's left over, and then this pin 13 is over here. So what I did was I lifted up the legs of the of the package here, so these this transistor does not make contact any longer. And then I just wired these pins to these pins. So I, I've just paralleled these two uh, electrically. And so now this transistor is taking over the job of that transistor. Um, and pin 13 is now just floating. Um, so it works, <laughs> it works. Uh, so let's, uh, yeah, it was driving me nuts. I couldn't figure out why. So let me put a, uh, let me put a scope probe on it. We're making a noise. Uh, let's see here. So let me put a scope probe on the output. So here is, uh, the filter. So I'm putting a square wave in. Okay. And as I turn the filter, I can make it go, uh, it'll change. I'm also modulating. Let me turn the modulation off there. There we, oops. There we go. So let me change the modulation. All right. So as I change the filter, I can sharpen it and I can make it roundy. Uh, so the filter is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And then if I go here and I turn on my resonance, there you go, it resonates just like it's supposed to. So yeah, the filter's working perfect now. That's great. And then I can modulate it as well, which is super cool. So you can hear it modulate. So now I can add some tones. Oops. Anyway, it's working. I don't know why you're staring at that. Why don't you stare down here? Um, yeah, it's working really, really good. I love it. So anyway, yes, thank you. I don't remember the viewer's name, but uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for about pin 13. Um, 
It is on the data, it's not on all data sheets. On one of the data sheets, it just says, oh, by the way, pin 13 is hooked to substrate. But it doesn't really tell you the ramifications of that. On another data sheet that I found um, just, just today, it says that pin 13 must be the lowest potential in the circuit. And uh, that's what this fellow had told me as well. It needs to be the lowest potential. Um, or I found out it just needs to float, <laughs> no potential, so it just doesn't get in the way. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. So, um, if you uh, get one of these boards, I'll put a, a, a addendum on the um, on the website on the PCB website. This is the this is the cut, and it's not it's not a cut. It's just a jump. You just take these three pins and you jump them over to those three pins, um, and. And that's it. That's, that, that's all you have to do. And then that board works. I'm not going to spin the board. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all you have to do. And then the other thing you have to do is uh, when you put this pin, when you put this device in, these three pins, 14, 13, 12, just, just bend them out. Those, those, pins, those pins are bent out and they're not going in the socket. So they're just floating into space there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then it's all working. So very cool. It was a fun project. Um, I wish I had caught that earlier. <laughs> you know, I had one board that seemed to work just fine, and I bet you I had wired it differently on the breadboard, and then when I got to lay it out, I used, inadvertently, I used pin, th like, the first time I probably said, oh yeah, I'm not going to use that transistor, the spare transistor happened to be the one with pin 13, I just got lucky. Um, so, so I'm glad, I'm glad the filter works. Um, as described and as modeled in Spice. I mean, Spice said it was going to be just fine. Uh, so, yeah, it finally did work.